The views and opinions of the Nissan Nation podcast are simply that. They are views and opinions of its guests or hosts. They do not reflect Nissan corporate or otherwise. Now, a DRB and KGB media presentation, the Nissan Nation podcast. Hit it, Kelly. Recorded live, coast to coast, it's the Nissan Nation podcast. From camping, racing, and all points in between, the NNP is your Nissan Nation podcast. Now start your engines and welcome in your hosts, David, Danny, and Holden. What is going on, Nissan Nation? From all things here in Middle Tennessee to the ATL and swing way over to the L.A. area. Sorry, I was waiting on Groners there to uh, open his beer. This is your Nissan Nation. I was going to open it once you introed me, but apparently I'm just going to sit here and mess up your intro. That's right, man. But this is your Nissan Nation podcast, and man, what a show we got here. So I've got Holden over there in his, looks like his uh, Manny Cave sort of room. I don't know what you call that. Uh, It's the cool cool zone. Oh, the cool Um, zone. Yeah, we got... All types of stuff in here. Star Wars memorabilia, <laughs> Georgia stuff. I got my big, huge. You can't really see it here. I'll turn it around. What does your wife call that room? I'm here's out my, of curiosity. Is the uh, oh the banner, Ooh. the wind banner. I got a got a little storm, deer on the wall. A deer on the wall. Stormtrooper. I don't even know what we're looking at anymore. Yeah, so there's my stormtrooper from Nissan's big thing and all that. So well, so I've got stormtroopers to uh, Danny in a race truck. He said he promised he was going to do it, and uh, sure enough, he's broadcasting from the driver's seat of the Nissan race truck. That's right, buddy. She is home, and we are in love. We've been spending a lot of time together in the garage. I haven't really really worked on her much, but uh, <laughs> but I've been I've been rubbing on her a lot. <laughs> well, that's all you. That's what you need. I'm not sure. That's what you need to do, man. But uh, yeah, I uh, it looks like that's a great cockpit to uh, do a podcast from, Danny. I mean, you look real comfortable, race seats and everything. Tell you what, it's better than the last couple of places I've been podcasting from, so I'm pretty happy. Well, that is good. That is good deal, man. I uh, I uh, you know, you were just like sitting there when I popped in on Skype here, and uh, I was just like, man. He's he's in his race truck, and you're just like you you don't probably realize it, but you have this weird glow about you, like you're just like super <laughs> super happy, man. And the light the light is always perfect in the, and I don't know if I I guess apparently I got called out by uh by uh who was it? Is it Dan Spellinger, Jason Pritchard? I don't remember who called me out, but uh, they said it's not a race truck until it races, so I don't know if I can call it that right now. And of course Holden called me out on it too, so it's just the Xterra racer maybe. It's not we, a race truck yet. It's just it's racer ish. Well, you raced at home, right? I mean, as fast as you could get at home. Uh, I I took it nice and slowed the way <laughs> home on account of the fact that it was one tread block on each side of the tire, well, so it was well, hanging on the trailer. Well, let's get into the. Wide. Let's just jump right into this. So, so Danny the other day hit us up, and you, I think you had taken a day off, or I don't know, you had a day off or something, and uh, you were all excited, man. And then, like, you started texting me and holding a little bit, like. And I could see it in your face, like frowny face Dan was there. And I was like, what's wrong, Dan? And you're like, you guys got a trailer I could borrow? And so so tell us about your day. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, I think it was, I don't even remember what day it was. I was going to go, I had I had it scheduled to pick up the race truck, I think on a Monday or Tuesday. I can't, imagine, I can't remember exactly. So I had a trailer with a winch set up, a nice big, like super wide trailer set up to go pick up the truck and I called my buddy and then he didn't call me back like the night before. And I was kind of sketching out. And I'm like, ah, maybe he's busy. He was coming back from the desert. So the next morning I call him and I'm like, Hey, what's going on? And he says, Oh dude, I, I had some problems last night. A buddy of mine had their trailer blow, like lose a wheel. And like, it's like a uh, toy hauler trailer. And so he's like, I had to put the toy hauler trailer on my trailer and tow that home. And I was like, Oh, great he's like yeah so i have like a trailer on my trailer right now and i'm not sure what to do with it or where to go with it so he's like i'm not gonna be able to help you out for for a little while so i uh <clears throat> threw it up on facebook to see if anybody around had one and then uh my good buddy mitch came through with the trailer that i actually um towed the truck with last time this is the same tra- trailer dave that, I nice. think that you were with me on 
Um, except except she, the truck is now like five inches wider yeah. than it was then. And, and it, it was already too wide for the trailer before. And now it was crazy wide. Plus the trailer didn't have a winch. I didn't really, I had a winch. I pulled the winch out of my race or out of my red truck to put it on the trailer, but I didn't have enough time to like mount it securely. And it didn't really work out. Kind of long story short is I got there and we backed the truck onto the trailer uh, it, meaning we pushed it back to the trailer and then we used ratchet straps on the trailer to kind of come along style, pull it up over the fenders. It was, it, it was like a four hour load time to get the, tra- <laughs> the truck on the trailer. It, it had to go over the fenders and then we had to disassemble some parts of the trailer. So it, it was kind of a, kind of a nightmare getting it on the trailer and getting it back over home. But so, 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 I mean, everything about the truck, though, this is just par for the course for you, right? I mean, it's, it's all been slightly a struggle. Uh, I mean, even the start of your racing career, you know, has is, is been up and down with, uh, you know, some failures, but, but that you kept per- 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 persevering, if I can say it right. And, uh, but it's all paid off. Now the truck is home and you're able to uh, start your part of the truck. Yeah, um, I'm stoked. I haven't, of course, as soon as I got home, my wife went out of town for like three or four days. So I didn't, I, I haven't even had time to really do much of anything on it other than, you know, pull the hood off and just, just a couple little tiny things. So uh, that left me to browse through CarTech and Amazon and all that stuff and start ordering parts that I know I'm going to need. So I, uh, I, I purchased like $400 worth of fuel system parts like two days ago. So now, now comes the nickel and dime parts where. Now comes I, I, now now comes where you're really spending and you don't realize you're spending. I think. At yeah, least, yeah. This at is least a, with this the, is the stuff where like I'm so broke lately. I, I didn't even spend all that much money, but. Well, at least with yeah, the they're, cage. They're starting to trickle in. Yeah, with the cage and stuff, you kind of knew. Okay, here's a big slump money I need to put yeah, each I knew, time. Yeah, each and, each piece, you know exactly what you're spending. Now it's like, yeah, it'll just it'll just be flowing out in a steady steady bit but yeah like and 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 fittings like dash x and fittings and fuel filters and fuel pumps and just that stuff alone was like 400 bucks for the fuel system actually i think it's gonna be 500 bucks when i'm when i'm said and done just to route the fuel line with uh like an air motive uh regulator and well, I think Field ultimately, ultimately, you have the best part right now. You can act like a racer. You can uh, you can sit in your truck and in the dreams, you know, you put that steering wheel, wrap your hands around that steering wheel, and you do you do the? Did you get in there and start going? Rrr, rrr, rrr. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I got my I got my little boy in here, and we were rigging, pretending we were racing and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Well, the listener, on him the listeners, stuff. if you're on Instagram, you'll see a picture of of what we kind of look like here doing this, but uh. I mean, there's a good spot where you could put a car seat, like, in that cage behind you. Oh, yeah. Actually, to tell you the truth, when I got it back here, I was like, you know what? I could make this, like, a three-seater. There's, like, perfect room for, like, a third seat kind of set up back there. So, eventually, maybe, a, you know, <clears throat> we'll see. I don't I don't think I'd race like that, but uh, who knows? I may throw another seat in there for some fun times. Yeah, man. Just make it a family affair. Well, I mean, if you get It'd three... It'd be the Nissan Nation podcast trio mobile, dude. <laughs> Like the Scooby <laughs> Scooby Doo mobile over there. <laughs> oh man, we'll have the the theme song that uh, Jr. made for us. <laughs> we'll just have that playing in the background instead of uh, we'll have uh, Danny snacks. <laughs> well, Holden, he did it, man. He uh, he's broadcasting from a race truck. Finally, <laughs> now, we, now we don't have to hear those lame updates anymore. Well, I, I yeah, maybe the the updates now will be a little little bit better. We can actually see some of the updates, and you'll actually maybe has have you even proven that the Regal hubs are on this thing yet? Uh, I can take a picture. They are. <laughs> I mean, I can take a picture of them. Nice. If you really want, but you could probably you could probably see them from the uh, the video. Right. But I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll uh, I'll post it up. Those nice long ARP studs in there. Well, um, I think one episode was uh, about studs. I don't think we want to get into that again. Um, so, so um, we've asked our listeners. We'll get into it. So we've asked our listeners all week. We've kind of bugged them, or I've bugged them a little bit. And you guys, you uh, guys, come in and, and stole my thunder this evening, and uh, had to one up me. And every every time I do a video, you got to one up me. But uh, we got some good topics tonight, guys, and. Uh, why don't we just jump right into it, Holden? You uh, 
you had posted out there about you would well you talked to us privately about man maybe the dealership should lower a titan and uh you know we're we're kind of lifted truck guys i mean i i love my time in my g35 and i plan on having another small car but i've never really slammed a car to the ground and it and it brought us to a topic that we really don't touch on much but it's a big part of the nissan enthusiasts thing i mean from the 90s all the 240s and everything or the yeah all the z's and stuff are all slammed so uh you want to jump into this holden and kind of start us out yeah i mean like you said i've been toying around with the idea of something different something unique um for the truck center that we got obviously we got lifted titans that's obviously the bread and butter something all of us are enthusiastic about but i, was, I mean i don't I've seen a few lower Titans here and there. And I was just like, you know, is there a market for something like that? You know, low, not something extreme like you, you might see, but just a lower Titan, nice little 20 inch wheels, some street performance tires and exhaust, maybe even a sound system. Um, something that, cause I mean, a lot of dealers have lifted trucks, but I don't know of a single dealer that has a lowered Titan on their lot. So then we started talking about, what cars would be cool lowered or are there, you know, people already lowered stuff. I'm, I know I've lowered a few Altimas in my day at the store, none of the new ones, but so that's kind of where we got. And I know some listeners, um, sent in some pictures, you know, we saw some three hundreds that have been lowered. I know Cody Fletcher mentioned, he was asking what about a lowered kicks? So, I don't know, guys. I mean, it is 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 lowered. Maybe something that we're going to see coming back. And I, I don't know, Danny. That might be more of a West Coast thing. I know he's probably got a lot more lowered vehicles out that way. I don't know. It's <clears> that <throat> it's weird because you see so much of the uh, the whole the whole thing with the 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 Rogue and and Nissan's bread and butter is kind of like a. Uh, sitting up higher quasi SUV or CUV, whatever they want to call it. So I don't know if, I don't know if the big pull to those things is that it's bigger and you can fit more stuff and more and bigger people in the back. And, you know, you can kind of take your friends out a little easier or if it's kind of up off the ground, it's just feels like a bigger vehicle. I, I don't know what the, the main draw is for most people, but, I know Dave, Dave mentioned something about a lowered, um, uh, what was it, Dave? A lowered Rogue? No, that was a uh, uh, Murano. Murano. That's yeah. what it was. And I, and I looked it up. You were kind of right. They look pretty freaking good. I don't think I've seen one out here. The only thing I, I could see with that particular one, if you guys go to our Instagram page, you'll see what we're talking about. Um, the only thing I would do, I think, would be do with a body widen kit on that. I think it would make it look even better. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's still a pretty big vehicle, you know. It's still, I mean, it's it's lowered and it's still tall, I guess you would say. But and it, I don't know, it, it, it's like it gives it a bit of a minivan feel on on one side, but on the other side, it's still it's kind of cool. It's like super different, you know. Well, I, uh, I mean, I. You know, I'm always looking for for different things to to talk about or, or post up about, and I I just dawned on me. Well, I guess it didn't dawn on me, but you know, we talk a lot of trucks, but but this is we're equal opportunity with cars. It's just the tuner guys are a little harder to get a hold of. It seems like they're they're in and out of the scene faster, or you know, a lot of the old school guys. Um, I don't I don't know. They just they just seem to be a little harder to get a hold of. So we've had some problems trying to find some of these guys to talk to. So I just started looking them up on Instagram and stuff and came across that. And you know, I've seen, you know, we've seen Sentras and and like I said the the 240s uh SX or whatever. It, we see a lot of that, but when I seen the Murano, I was like, man, that really that that stands out. I mean, practical? No. Is it something the dealership would ever want to do? I can't think so holden I, I i mean not that extreme anyways i could see dishing out some rims or something but but uh it's still it's it's i kind of i don't feel like it's ever went away but i feel like the car scene like that is is kind of about to hit again 
Yeah, it's definitely not something like at my store. I wouldn't be looking into lowering a Murano just because that market's so small. Putting wheels on them, stuff like that. That's something we've done in the past. Um, that's definitely something, no big deal there. <clears throat> so obviously, it seems like people are always willing to make, pay more for a lifted truck. But sometimes it's just a matter of maybe catching that person's eye. Maybe they come in, they fully expected, hey, I'm going to buy, you know, we mentioned Murano, Kicks. I'm going to buy my normal looking one. And then they might see something like that that, hey, wasn't planning on spending that much, a couple extra thousand dollars for something like that. But that does look really, really cool. Um, that's kind of why I was thinking of the Titan. Like, there's guys out there that, are going to buy, you know, a chromed out Titan because that's what they want. And in their mind, they might think it look, it would look cool lowered or something like that. But with it sitting on the lot, it might sit, get someone to be like, actually, that does look really cool. That's exactly the type of thing I'd like. So that's kind of where I was going with it. That's where, I guess, how the conversation got started. So um, I do, I, the more I think about it, Cody Fletcher's idea of a lowered kicks, I, I do kind of really like that. I, right. I like the kicks. I think there's a lot of unique ways you could go with it, whether it's kind of I've gone with one with the rally style with a little bit more aggressive tire, different wheels, the basket up top. But now I'm thinking about a, a, a lowered one, maybe with some bigger bigger wheels and everything. You could also make that kind of work too. Well, is, is it from the dealer standpoint is with internet pricing and everything anymore, it's really hard to battle a dealer on just inventory you guys are all pretty close in pricing anymore so for a dealership now you really need to stand out by doing some unique things with the vehicle right yeah and that's the thing once it comes to online pricing no one's really going to come in unless they just see a picture and that's what they want on that truck that's priced because so many people sort by price and things like that so your truck that's lifted or customized they're not going to come in on but what you're hoping for is that they come in on just a stock vehicle and then they show up in the store and then they see the customized vehicles and that makes them go, actually, that's really nice. I wanted X, Y, Z. Cause like I said, I got, I got, I got three lifted trucks plus two Rocky Ridge trucks. So I got a total of five lifted trucks on my lot. I've had them for a while. I've had three of them for a little bit, but I've sold, you know, four different lift kits off of that. So that's kind of what you're wanting. If you want that one showpiece? that just kind of inspires people's imagination. Right. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I know. And I, you know, we're, we're kind of throwing around the, the, the little CUV lowered or whatever, but truly like, I think the, the, the new Maxima and the new Ultima, um, they have such rad body lines and I've seen some of those lowered, um, just on the internet and stuff. And, uh, I mean, they, you see one of those kind of slammed down a little bit with like a nice set of wheels on it and, uh, you know, a nice little front lip kit or, um, you know, even like a splitter or something like that. And the, the, those cars look so freaking good. They just stand out so much more than just like your standard platinum, you know, kind of luxury edition. Um, and it might grab a whole different demographic of people that, you know, never that they may have seen some, you know, the Maxima and said, oh, that's, you know, that's a really cool car. It's for like a 50 year old dude that wants to look a little bit flashy, but still have a nice riding sporty <laughs> That noise by the way car. is holding yeah. opening up his Holden bottle. Holden is opening his uh, the loudest drink holder ever. <laughs> it's filled with thirsty. thirsty. No, but uh, but yeah, like the Maxima. I mean, it, it appeals to me as a lowered, you know, sporty kind of car. Well, we had um, seen when we did Nizfest out there. We had seen some of that stuff out there, and it. I often wonder now with the kind of the tuner scene is, is everything is front wheel drive now. Uh, I mean, infinity still does some rear wheel drive stuff, but is it, is it kind of that, you know, we see VT kind of crap. Is it kind of that deters that crowd a little bit because it's like, well, yeah, I c anybody can drop a vehicle. It's, it's pretty simple to do, but when you get to it, you're like, great. I mean, a lot of times you drop a car for performance wise too. It's not just like, just slamming it to the ground because you want to run over every speed bump and feel it. Um, the lower you get, the quicker you can handle corners. So is it just some of the the cars aren't exciting enough to do that? Uh, I think it could be. Obviously, you're going to have people who lower, you know, GTRs, lower Zs. I see those pretty frequently. But I think 
when it comes to, like Danny's saying, with the Maximas, with the Ultimas, sometimes it's just people don't know they would even be into something like that. Um, so I think yeah. it just comes down to having one sitting on the showroom, a lowered Ultima, and someone just happens to be there shopping for an Ultima season. It's like, actually, I really like the look of that. I don't know what... Sometimes people don't even know what it is. They're like, what's the difference between this one and the one on the showroom? And you'll tell them, like, oh, this one's lowered. And they'll be like, oh, that, that's awesome. I, I didn't even think about that. That's a really good idea. So sometimes people don't even know that's what they want until they see it. Right. Well, is, is uh, you know, you were talking about with the kicks of doing maybe doing something like that. Um, I mean, I guess being somewhat first on the scene helps. But you, you when you have a lowered vehicle like that, and of course you're, you're going to want to showcase that in the dealership because you don't want every, every kid and their brother wanting to test drive the thing. Do you, do you find that it's an older crowd that ends up buying that car or is it, is it that young kid that, that maybe wants to finance himself to death, um, trying to buy that car? Um, it, it can be a little bit of both. Usually, when it comes to the more expensive stuff, um, it's usually not that young kid because sometimes it can be harder to get him approved on something like that. Once you start adding stuff to the actual sticker price of the vehicle, usually you need someone with pretty good credit or a substantial down payment. So usually you don't see that. Ladies and gentlemen, Holden's uh, daughter is making her podcast appearance on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead, um, man. I'm sorry. So, so that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, usually when, when you're going to be financing and at getting a lifted, lowered, anything really added to that sticker price, you're either going to need pretty good credit or some substantial money down because a bank's going to be looking at that like, hey, you can't add $10,000 to this $20,000 vehicle and this is your first car. So, yeah, there's plenty of people who would like to do stuff like that. Sometimes it's not always feasible. We try to make it as feasible as possible. But you're starting to see, uh, I'd say you're more uh, 25 to 35 year olds looking for stuff like that. Because everyone, especially this newer generation that's coming up and buying cars, they want something unique. They want something that speaks to them. They want something that's customized. They want something that's different. That's why you're seeing the two-tone kicks take off like it has is – because people want that. They want to stand out. Um, and that, that's an easy way for them to stand out is with you know, different colors, this, that, the other. And most people are accessorizing their vehicle in some way, shape, or form after they buy it. Right. Well, I mean, what's next, though? A Rogue that's going to be two-tone blue? <laughs> I, uh... I, I don't know. I don't know. It's It's been interesting w- when you think about it. If you would have told me three, four years ago... Um, we'd be talking about a two-toned CUV. I would have thought you were joking or like, no, that would never work, but it's out. It's working. Um, they're basically, I always thought, I always thought two tones is for like old guys and their King ranch <laughs> trucks and stuff like that. No, I didn't think it was ever going to be a young, right. cool thing to have. Well, and they're kind of Nissan's taking the plunge on that a little bit because I don't, I, I know like maybe the Ford Flex and some of them have maybe a different colored roof, but they're really kind of out there on their own with that. I mean, you kind of got Mini has always been involved with it, but... Yeah. I, so you kind of got, got them, but Mini's its own separate thing in my mind. Well, Dan, Dan, I mean, what are you seeing in California, man? I mean, you you were really in the heart of, of the this scene, I think. I mean, well, I mean, you guys got everything, but like, if you think of Fast and the Furious and those kind of movies, you think California. Um, <clears throat> I'm seeing a ton of Honda Civics, the newer Honda Civics. It's kind of back in the scene again. Um, it was, you know, it was kind of like a '90s, early 2000. Well, 2000s. That was kind of like the cheap. Um, that, oh, I was getting a phone call. That was like the cheap the cheap car kids could get and, you know, maybe put a turbo on, maybe not, maybe just lower them or whatever, throw some 17s on. But I think with the, the new Civic, there's like a resurgence of it. I've seen quite a few of those um, out lowered. I mean, you see a ton of 300s out here. Or not 300s. Um, 350? 350, 370Zs, and uh, G37s um, out here lowered. Um, they're pretty They're pretty popular. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of what else you see a ton of. I guess I guess I notice all the Nissans more. Probably that's one of the big things too. Well, I, you know, I'm not. I, I notice them when they come by, and the right. other stuff I just kind of yeah, that's cool. I guess. Well, I think Nissan really today, all through the 2000s to today, they owned that 90s market for that stuff. Really, I mean, I, I you'll see some Corollas and stuff out there. Uh, I, Acura Acura was big. I, I I don't know Honda Honda Acura and Nissan were the were kind of the go to. There, you know what I. I, actually, I would kind of disagree with you, Dave, because the, the Nissan—I I didn't see it. The Nissans were st- still kind of squared out. The Sentras and Altimas—they didn't have this the styling that you would saw in like Integras, and even the Accords looked a lot better slammed, uh, as well as the Civics. Nissan wasn't huge until they started getting their their Zs going. Hmm. In my opinion. Right. Well, I mean, I mean, definitely, definitely. I mean, I know the Civic; it's always been like that cheap little thing to do. But if I think, you know, you think about mid '90s cars, which is kind of the last hurrah of a rear rear wheel drive on a lot of these. But like your your two forties, Nissan had quite a few of them out. Yeah, uh, Sentra. yeah, the two forty, and yeah, the two forties made a resurgence. But yeah, you're right. I I forgot about the two forty. The two forty was a big deal back back then but it's even it's it's like the big deal right now that's the, that you see those everywhere out here i, I hate to cut you off Dave, but you no, see those fine. everywhere out here and a shell with no motor if it's somewhat straight is two thousand dollars out here yeah and, and i'm talking no motor no trans if it's straight it's like two grand well we have everybody wants a drift car you know mm-hmm. that's the mm-hmm. drift car of choice they throw a k uh k24 in it or uh or a um you know, they'll try and throw in an RB26 or, you know, they'll, they'll throw in all kinds of weird engines in them. Um, mostly just, you know, single turbo four cylinders and they're, they're off to the races or off to their, their <laughs> hooning friend's house to hoon in their front front yard. <laughs> well, even before like the, who, did you say hoony friends? Yeah, dude. Everybody <laughs> hoons. Hooning's, hooning's the thing to do out here. Well, man, even in the early 2000s, though, if you think about it, I mean, when you had the Celica, the Eclipse, the first Eclipse and all that. Oh, the Eclipse. Man. I forgot about the Mitsubishi. Yeah. Killed it with their Eclipse, the Spiders. And the, and then you even had the the Talon that was like yeah. the knockoff Eclipse the and everything. Talon. Yeah. I yeah, remember yeah. helping my buddy lower one of those in the driveway. So there was that whole si- – and it just is like Supra's, almost completely died yeah. off. So, yeah, Supra, Celica – and that whole scene has kind of died off in a, in a way. Like, where is, I mean, what is that exciting sports car that's in that price range nowadays? I mean, the Z is one of the cheapest sports cars you can get, and it's even mid 30s. Well, yeah, that, but I that's, think, what, I think what I've seen a huge resurgence of, and I, I, I don't want to say I'm in the scene at all, but I do take a liking to all things motorsports. So what I see a ton of, is a lot of that throwback, and it's it kind of kind of how you see like the resurgence of uh, '80s, '80s, '90s throwback with the with the um, glasses and the you know mullets and the high waisted jeans and stuff. You see a resurgence of all the all the guys that are of age now that maybe couldn't afford those cars, or they'll get those cars that they had when they were kids and they drop an LS Motors in them because it's so dirt cheap, and they'll they'll toss in a you know a, a 5.3 truck motor and throw a turbo on it. And they'll they'll slide that into with a with a simple Holly EFI system, and now you have a 600 horsepower 240Z that you can just spin tires until your your eyes bleed. You know, well, Danny, so I see like a ton of guys picking up these old these dirt cheap cars, throwing a truck motor in and turbo turbocharging it. Well, I'm not going out looking for a 1985 Buick Skyhawk to to drop an LS <laughs> engine in. I can tell you that, man. I don't know. That sounds like fun, Dave. That sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, well, you know, of, of course, we've brought this up before, but movies like Fast and Furious, of course, brought some of this back into into the spotlight a little bit. Um, now I can't tell whether those are uh, comic book movies or are they actually car movies, but but they are what they are. Um, but you know. That was where the IDX, where we got excited a couple of years ago about the IDX. That was really like it was like holy cow, man! You could feel like the excitement on the internet of that scene was like, ooh, our next finally a car. And then of course Nissan crushes our our dreams. Cookie Monster over here opening up his. You almost his, done. You almost done holding. <laughs> 
pulled that was like pulled, sneaky pulled, snake no <laughs> the loudest thing i've ever heard in my life it was <laughs> under my couch oh my gosh dude God, I have the most sensitive microphone good. in the world. Oh my gosh, Holden! Obviously, Holden's <laughs> you know, like, over there. She brought me American, great American cookies, man. <laughs> Birthday cake, double doozies, all the way. Holden's been Open stuffing. Season. He's been stuffing cookies over there since we've started this podcast <laughs> twenty nine minutes ago. It's just been that, but uh, but yeah, like the IDX man, really like. Uh, you know, I know Nissan, they want to be king of the hill and want to go that whole weird partnership. We sell the most vehicles. But, you know, if if nobody's excited about your brand and you've turned your car basically into disposable shoes or something, like, these car companies need something like this. And look at Ford. You've got a Mustang that's basically the only car they're going to produce. Chevy, you've got a Camaro, which is basically the only car now they're going to produce. Even Dodge who hasn't changed the Challenger <laughs> since it's came out other than maybe the headlights, you know, they all have an enthusiast car and we're dealing with a Z that's 10 years well past its prime and a GTR that's almost past its prime. But here's the, here's the thing, Dave is let's say they have, they have Hellcats, they have 700 horsepower editions. Like Nissan comes out with like a Nismo edition with bigger brakes and a, and a cool pinstripe. And maybe ten more horsepower. Like if Nissan came out, it with has a, a spoiler that's a different yeah. color, Danny. Yeah, if <laughs> no. Nissan came out with a seven hundred horsepower Z that you could get off the showroom floor, people would say something. They would care, but n- nobody's caring. About, I mean, I I would love a I would love a Nismo three fifty Z, but you could get so you could probably get uh, a five hundred horsepower Mustang for the same price you could get for a Nismo Z. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm-hmm. it's not. Well, yeah, and we beat not that, competitive anymore. Well, we've beat that poor dead horse, you know, for four years now of 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 that. But you know the thing that binds all these things together, parts. Parts. They do bind things together, and whether it be uh your guy budgeting, you know, his little two forty build, um, whether there's a guy out there just you know trying to make a living pulling parts from a a you know, a junkyard or whether it be people like Holden over there trying to sell OEM parts. Our next topic really, it's going to pull us together. It's going to unite us or divide us. So, uh, it, it's going to mostly divide. <laughs> so, so we had posted on our Facebook page on We've got an actual group where you can, you can interact with, uh, with other listeners and stuff. It's called the NNP chat and you just click our Facebook page and it'll link you to it. But we've asked, a little bit ago of like, Hey, what's, what's your opinion of, of parts? Because, you know, Holden would love to sell as many OEM parts over there as he can. It helps the dealership in the long run. Um, part stores like DAPA or whoever you go to, you know, they want to sell as many parts as they can. And then there's always these little entrepreneurs who would really like to sell their parts, you know, at a reasonable markup sometimes. Um, but, we're all on budgets. Danny, you're on a budget over there with your race truck now. Now you Hell see yeah, it. Yeah. You see it more than ever that <laughs> that maybe that that axle that you've got under there that cost you a fortune. If you could have found a used one, I'm guaranteeing you've probably been all over the used one, right? I I did find the axle that's Oh, it is here, used? I bought used for about $2,000 and after every this axle cost me more than if I was to buy a brand new one. To right. tell you the truth, Dave. I could have gone out and bought a brand new one for because i think i'm thirty thirty nine hundred 3900 dollars into this axle right so mm. so you live and yeah. learn on that one i huh? could have bought a brand new camberg for what i have into it but yeah hindsight's 2020 20. well i mean i you know i'm the same way with my my xterra you know i i not cheapened out i guess but i i budgeted everything i could and i i bargain shopped everything and it generally generally used parts seem to bite me in the ass so i've never i've never been a super Big fan of that. And then, you know, I think it was episode late 20s, early 30s, Holden's first show come on. And and we hit, touched on this just a little bit back then of, you know, parts. And because um, I think that was part of why you came on, Holden. You were doing a lot of parts and, you know, you were trying to get that business going. But you had brought up something one time, and it's always stuck with me ever since, is, you know, Nissan builds their OEM parts for a certain there's a certain mileage they expect to get out of a part. Um, 
I and, and we'll break it down to the simplest thing. We all need brakes at some point. I've come to find out I put cheap brakes on Kelly's Xterra. I had to put rotors and stuff on there. And like there's just brake dust everywhere. And I guarantee you in the six or eight months she's had all those brakes on there, they're almost halfway done, I bet. And had I went with the OEM replacement brakes that Nissan sells, what, holding they get, what, sixty to 70,000 miles out of a set of front brakes anymore? It's something ridiculous. I mean, depending on how you, how you drive. Sure. Brakes is one of those things. I don't tell anybody what to right. expect out of their well, brakes. But, but what but I'm yeah, – I've, mean, got, I've got on my, my company Frontier, I've got forty two or 3,000 miles in that truck now, and I can guarantee you I do not – I'm not close to needing brakes on that thing just yet. Yeah, I mean, obviously when Nissan builds something, you know, if they're building something, let's say, that's in the powertrain, they're going to want it to, at the very, very least, last 60,000 miles because the less warranty work they can do on a vehicle, the more money that is in their pocket. So when they're building some of this stuff, that's why I've always said, I mean, air filter, I mean, an air filter is kind of an air filter. That's like, to me, it's like quesadillas. Like, you go to a Mexican restaurant, you can get a quesadilla. It's really hard to fuck up a quesadilla. I don't like, know. It's Dan- really hard Danny's to fuck been up out here. Filter. Danny's been out here on the East Coast, and he seems to think that they're not authentic like they are out there. No, like, here's the deal, Dave. He's he's exactly right. You can get a quesadilla across the U.S. and ninety eighty percent of the time, it's gonna be it's gonna be a quesadilla. But if you wanna if you wanna get some abondagas or some kind of uh, barbacoa or I don't know, some chili verde, whatever. It, there's 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 definitely a, a difference when you start getting into the authentic authentic uh, Mexican food, and that's the same same thing. If you you know if you get into something that's sensors or one of the guys brought up, you know if he, he if he buys used parts, if it's something simple like a tie rod, sometimes maybe he goes and buys something. Um, you know, that's not OEM. However, that's still not the, the same. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely a fine line. Right. Well, let's, let's start dividing that line a little bit. So <clears throat> there's, there are definitely certain things that I'm an OEM snob about, like belts. I want OEM belts. I, I just think that, that the, their, their specs on them are, are better. Like, especially like with my Xterra, the timing belt. There's no way that I want some. I'm not going to Rock Auto for that because they're cheapest for a reason on some of this stuff, right? Yeah, I think Um, I think there's I think there's a big thing to be said too here is is we're talking like uh, we're talking we're we're not talking performance parts here for the most part, right? We're just talking yeah, just in general stock replacement parts versus you know OEM parts by by a manufacturer, right? Right, because. uh, you can't you can't really compare, you know, if somebody makes a, a timing belt that they took the stock timing belt and they say, okay, you know what, this is a this is a ten, you know, this will last you an, an extra, you know, hundred. This is a two hundred thousand mile timing belt because we you know introduced Kevlar and this and that and you know we've tested it and you know something that a dealer originally when they designed it they designed it to go a hundred thousand miles. So we have to make sure that this is very clear that this is not about aftermarket. Um, performance parts. This is aftermarket replacement right. parts for, as opposed to OEM parts. Right. But yeah, but like your, your serpentine belts and stuff, that's kind of where I'm starting with this is I'm, you can call me a snob, but that's one thing that like, like Holden said, Nissan doesn't design these parts going, man, I hope in 10,000 miles they're coming back needing another one. Cause I'm going to offer a lifetime warranty on a, on a replacement belt. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and two, you got to think, I'd say, what is your, what is whatever you're building? What is its purpose? What is it supposed to do? Because to me, when I was a service advisor, I would try to recommend people to go with the Nissan Altima or Altima, (laughs) Nissan alternator. (laughs) Even if you were going with the Nissan remanufactured alternator, you're still going with the Nissan product um, because it's built to last. Hey, Mr. Customer, this alternator lasted you 120,000 miles. What, what do you plan to keep this vehicle longer? Are you just repairing it so you can trade it in? And then when you get into the aspect of, okay, some of our listeners obviously wheel their stuff, you're going to ruin your alternator. If, if it was me, I'd say, hey, 
don't worry about getting an OEM alternator because you know you're going to dunk it in a mud pit somewhere and you're going to ruin it. So you might as well just go with a cheaper one that's going to get you through. Um, but if you're planning on keeping your vehicle for a long time, I'd probably go with an OEM one. Well, we should have Ryan Miller on to discuss alternators because I think he's on like number 20. <laughs> Yeah, see, Ryan, there's no point in him going OEM. Like, right. For, I, for, I, I wouldn't even try to sell him. I'd be like, bro, just go to Napa. You're going to ruin it in two weeks Find anyways. the cheapest alternator you can find and buy seven of them, <laughs> which, is, which is wild because that's purely like a different part of the country because I don't know anybody out here that's changed an alternator on their Nissan. Well, I, I, I know I have. I know our buddy Luke I has. Have. And, um, okay, so so – did normal use that the Nissan alternator as an OEM part is is may let's just put a number on it a hundred thousand miles everything we'll just say for the sake of saying that everything is built for a hundred thousand miles so now we're going to get into do I go to we'll say okay that Nissan alternator is two hundred dollars I don't know what they go for but we'll just use the number two hundred dollars so you go well that's a that's a hard pill to hard pill to swallow and whether you have the dealership put it on or say we're for the sake of argument we're going to say we're going to install all these parts ourselves because we don't want to add more cost to it so holden's over there with his oem 200 hundred dollar alternator i start getting online because we all do it we amazon's big for a reason because they cheap cheap bargain everything so you start googling and, and you find okay here's a napa has one for a hundred and sixty dollars so there's a forty dollar savings so then there's junkyards that you can go to and not everybody not everybody's junkyard savvy not everybody knows how to go to par slash or car slash parts.com and start finding everything you need um but there, there's companies and services out there that will go find you these things. Well, so let's say, okay, there's that Nissan alternator, uh, OEM alternator, but it's used. And say the car's got 75,000 miles on it, but that alternator is going to now cost you $100. How do you, how in your mind do you justify, say you're a mid 20 to mid 30 something, how do you justify the price differences? When it, I think I think for one, when it comes down to it, uh, you know, you can't really judge per, a person's decisions a hundred percent just based on what they buy. Because you know, if somebody's got a hundred bucks and they got to put a new alternator in their car, and they don't have two hundred dollars, <laughs> right? No, no, buy a hundred dollar alternator and they're going to put it in the car. So, uh, you know, this this all kind of like it, it, in the end, it all comes down to what can you afford. But if you can afford something in my opinion if you can afford something that's that's going to last it if you're going to have the car for the time that you expect the part to last for you should bar, buy the part that you expect to last for however long you're going to have the car for right you know if you if you have a car and you're like i'm going to trade this in in the next two years throw a throw a <laughs> throw a throw a auto zone part in it you know like whatever is it you know that's that's my opinion but if you want to you know, not get stranded and you want to, you know, if you care about your vehicle and you want to make sure that it's quality, it's never going to leave you stranded. That's when I say buy OEM or like, I, like I kind of said before, buy, buy OEM or performance, you know, better, better than OEM in my opinion, not some stuff, you know, sometimes performance stuff isn't quite as right. Well, in, in, I mean, as you say, in, I'm an upgrader, like anything that I buy for my vehicle, I want it like yeah. built twice as good or twice as strong as whatever came in the vehicle but but what? this this hey. leads us to the topic of the ever all these nissan frontier and xterra guys wanting to put the titan engines in so i think it comes to a point where it's not practical to go oh, completely oem because i'm sure you could buy a crate gen 1 titan motor but holden what are you looking at eight grand probably for a crate motor it's something ridiculous versus yeah I think uh, I think our buddy Duncan over there is pricing them at about fifteen hundred to two grand for the motor. So I mean, it's definitely yeah. But you know, I, I'm the kind of guy with my Xterra. Yeah, I'm not putting an eight grand motor in it, but also I don't plan on like Kelly's Xterra. I don't ever plan on really getting rid of it either. So you don't want to just completely kind of bargain shop, right? No, you definitely don't want to completely bargain shop. I mean, you want to know where's that motor coming from? What's the, I mean, as much of a story as you can possibly get on it. If you get a VIN number, obviously that's going to help because you can run a Carfax on it, see where that vehicle came from. 
service records if they're available, um, all types of things like that. I know when I bought used engines for customers, I would, <clears throat> if they just couldn't afford a new one, hey, I just need to get this car running so I can trade it in. Um, if you, I would try to get a VIN number if possible and get as much of that on Carfax so they can see, hey, we're getting you the best quality we possibly can find. The more info you have on that, the better it's going to be. That's why if I was doing anything V8 related, I'm picking up um, the phone and calling Brennan over there at uh, Driven Desire. He he has a good source for those motors, um, and I would trust his opinion because he's going to know what he's looking at and what to look for and well, specifics. And and that do, that does lead to a good point of of if you're like trying to upgrade your motor or whatever, go to a source that a reputable source like like them that deal in that. And and maybe you can't send your car to that guy, but He's done enough of these swaps where he knows exactly what you need. He knows just the, you know, a good condition motor where I think where you start shopping with some of these people who um, are questionably obtaining these motors who may have never seen them or laid hands on them, you know, you just go, okay, well, even, even if I'm buying this junkyard motor and this guy's 1500 bucks and, and driven desires is 1800, we'll say. I personally am going to probably be swayed to the guy that that does it sort of for a living versus just taking my chances on on some Yahoo that just says, "Yeah, I can get you one." Yeah, you definitely. I mean, you got to look at where you're getting it from, what type of shop, or whoever it is you're getting it from. Um, how long have they been around? Is is this their business? Like that's Brennan's business. The last right. thing he's going to want is to put his name to something. Um, but well, then you might have a junkyard well, some, shop somewhere who just opened up six months ago, and you don't even know if they're going to be in business a year down the road, right? To even warranty out this motor for you. Well, some um, people want so to put their name all, all over this stuff, Holden. So you know, when they're pulling parts, they got to have their name all over it. I mean, it, it, there's times when junkyard parts are acceptable, pull parts are acceptable. I mean, I've worked in parts for years and i've done all types of jobs i mean i've seen insurance companies who want to use junkyard parts and i can't tell you how many times i've sent doors and things back where i'm like this is not acceptable at all well yeah and you know what there's a i gotta say for the for the for the the pick apart scenario um there's definitely you know there's there's something to be said for them um you know, if if you're lazy and you just want somebody to find you something and ship it to you, um, this, I, I don't think it's a big deal to have have somebody pull apart for you and send it to you. Um, and you pay, you know, you pay a little bit more than you would if you had gone out either yourself and got it or gone to carparts.com or whatever it was and got it. Um, <clears throat> and then there's, you know, there's the stupid stuff that you'd pay a million bucks cup holders for the back yeah. of the truck, you know. Um, just, just those weird parts that you're not going to find at a decent price anywhere for the most part. Um, when sometimes junkyards will, they'll ream you on that stuff too, man. Cause they know it's yeah, a high yeah, volume yeah. thing. So it, yeah. So, you know, the, I, I think there's a place in this world for, for, you know, pick apart or, or, you know, someone that finds you your parts for you that, that, you know, you might just need a little something and they'll grab it for you while they're out picking parts or whatnot. Well, but you it's, know, it's, you know, it's it's totally up to you know what what your budget is and what you need. So so, yeah. but what would well, okay? We'll say like CV axles now because I mean we 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 knows we know as as off road guys we kind of know where. Would you rather have now a used OEM CV axle that 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 some some guy milled around and found in a junkyard, or would you rather have that Napa lifetime warranty? I mean, where, where where would you draw the line on something opinion, like that? I have a very strong opinion on this. I would rather have a used OEM axle than a Napa Gold or whatever lifetime warranty because I have seen so many. I've I've only ever run stock M205 axles on mm. on on the Xterra and on the Frontier, and I've never broken an axle. Knock on wood. Um, I've run some pretty hot stuff. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not super gnarly with my throttle pedal. Maybe it's because I've got lucky, but I've seen so many guys, so many guys blow axles. Um, and like I said, I, there's a lot of different factors to blowing axles, whether, you know, you have the 
wheel cranked 180 and you're giving it too much or you're there's a lot of different things that come into play however i th- i think that the i think that oem axles are much stronger than what you find at napa you, or what, you, you know that the aftermarket scenarios do you think like tie rods and everything like that is the same or do you are because i've heard of a lot of guys here lately with mo ball joints and stuff just like going through control arms and stuff because the ball joints are just seem garbage I'm, I'm pretty i'm pretty disappointed with my lower control arms that i got there oh uh, i don't remember i think they're moogs i don't remember exactly i'm i'm a little disappointed the um okay so i'm so i'm kind of disappointed in two things i'm i'm a little disappointed in my lower control arms they have uh maybe 70,000 miles on them and my lower control arm bushing boots are are getting torn i it's probably probably you know for me beating it up and putting it through what it's what it what it you know all the all the off road that I've done so it's probably due just because of what I what I do with my truck. Well, and they build but, those for a certain mileage too, but they don't yeah. like those on for what we do with our trucks. They don't take in consideration either of like hey yeah, these guys I, are. Now, now that I'm saying it, I pr- it's probably just because you know I've I've been in and out of so much water and heat and dirt and th- those boots just aren't aren't made to handle that right so so would you would you think junkyard lower controls then or or just go strictly no, no, brand no. New? I, I, <clears throat> right now right now i have rock auto inner and outer tie rod tie rods on my on my red truck um just because they're they were dirt cheap not the titan titan tie rods they're dirt cheap grab them real quick put them on if i need a new you know if i go through them another seventy thousand miles whatever if i have my truck that long um, and the same thing with lower control arms. If you were to buy dealer lower control arms, I think they're pretty expensive. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here, Holden. They're, they're, they're pretty pricey compared to buying a set of, um, lower control arms off like rock auto or something like that, which I, th- yeah. I think rock auto sell, sells Moog and one another brand, um, which you're probably looking at about 250 bucks for a set of Titan lowers. Um, if I remember right last time, I, last time I, I priced them out, which I don't know. It, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go with stock stock lowers that are used, just because the it's all about that lower that lower ball joint. Mm-hmm. And if those boots are already starting to crack, especially if they've been sitting in a yard for a long time, as soon as those as soon as those lower ball joint boots crack, you know, those ball joints are going to start getting tore up and fall apart, and you're going to just have to replace them again. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much completely agree with everything Danny says. Um, I'm the same way as Danny. Knock on wood, I still have my original stock CV axles in my Xterra. So that's two rock challenges. And Dave, I mean, you <laughs> said you've seen those rock challenges. Right. I mean, are I'm, you on a are you on a two hundred five M two hundred five Titan Titan front diff? No. So you got you're running the the long R one eighty axle. And I'm wow. I'm locked, and I use the locker on the rock challenge. I've sent that thing skyborne on the front end, and that's that's pretty so, amazing what you put it through. Yeah, so de- definitely no fucks given on some of those trips. And <laughs> it just takes me back to my first trip in Moab doing fins and things. First day, um, you know, Moab's a different animal. So I'm out there like, oh, man, this is crazy, blah, blah, blah. And there's a guy that's in front of me. He's been to Moab a few times, and this, and that, and the other. And we're doing Kenny's Climb right there on fins. And so we're waiting, you know, and we're out talking. And he's like, yeah, you dealers, y'all, y'all just are a ripoff, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, man, yeah, sure. And he's like, I just get Napa Gold CV axles. I got a problem with it. I just take it back, replace it, and I'm good to go. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. It's got a lifetime warranty. That's cool. So he goes up uh, Kenny's Climb, and he doesn't get weird on it or anything. He's just going up nice and smooth and steady, and just you hear it pop. Broke his CV axles right there. Guess what? He had to turn around and go back home. And I just always, in my mind, I'm always like, yeah, that's nice that you can take that axle out and go. Re- but guess what? Now you're out. Yeah, going back to Napa, replacing your axle. Well, some everyone else is still out here wheeling. There, I mean, there's something to be said for it. I mean, obviously, there's people who snap them, and like I said, knock on wood. I don't know if I'm just the luckiest human in the world. Maybe or you're, maybe you're pretty just, lucky. Yeah, I know a lot I of guys pretty, with stock ones that have broken. Like, <laughs> well, I think just, let's not let's not let anybody know that like. That's that's very rare, even for stock 
R180 axles. I've seen so many of those break. Not not that they're super weak, but when you beat on them for a long enough time, eventually you're yeah. going to break something. I think but it's that, almost more impressive that I run it. I think, it, I think it's extremely the, impressive. I run it locked two in the front end yeah. on those rock challenges. Well, some of, some impressive. of those guys with the CVs, I think it's a point of pride when they break them too. Like it, like it adds to their off road credibility. <laughs> like they Which they I, have. I've never got. To me, I'm like. Got my chest puffed out even more. That yep, I would have I've been, only broken an alternator in a wheel. Broke, <laughs> if you broke something, then you were. Uh, I wouldn't. Well, get... I mean, if you go out and you're like, I'm gonna go break something, then f and send it, bro. Yeah. You know. But if you're looking to get through a trail without breaking something, because I mean, there's some trails like if I broke, it would have absolutely ruined the most epic day ever. So, you know, like that trifecta. If I broke on that trail, it would have sucked. You know, it would have made because that was a long day. And I just wanted to get through it. And it was such an epic day because nobody broke it. It was so good out, out in Moab. And uh, for, for those of you that haven't been to Moab, it's it's uh, Poison Spider, Gold Spike, Gold Bar Rim, I think, are the three trails. Um, and it's, dude, it's such an epic, epic, epic run. And there was like three of us. And, but if I broke on that, it would have sucked. You know, it we probably would have got out of there when the sun was going down and, and super late and a little bit more exhausted. It wouldn't have ruined our day, but it would have sucked. Yeah, you know, well, especially I'm, if we were in a bad spot, and you don't want to break in a bad spot because then you're well, trying and that's to figure out how break. to jack the thing up while it's backwards and it's up on its corner or something like that. Yeah, and that's where you always break is in those bad spots. It never on flat yeah. ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you never break off on a flat trail. <laughs> yeah, I would consider an epic. I don't even know if I call it a break. It was more just is when I lost the beat on that rock challenge, Dave, and. Lost the bead, flat tire, and I just pretty much told everyone to get out of the way because I was gonna fucking send it, <laughs> and then just finished it, and then had a tri- my wheel is now a triangle, and it sits <laughs> in my office as a point of pride. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. well, so now, so now, obviously, well, I don't know. Maybe you can do this, but I don't think Napa sells airbags and stuff like that. I don't think I can go down to my AutoZone and they're gonna get me an airbag, but. Personally, I'm a little iffy with used airbags, and I know some repair shops are big on like because there's definitely a cost savings on that. But where do you on that, guys? Where would you draw the line on something there? I I wouldn't be a hundred percent opposed to it. I, it would come down to again. I mean, am I a single guy in my twenties? Do I got kids that are going to be sitting in that seat? I would. I personally, if I was going to use a used airbag, I'd want to know how long that vehicle sat in a junkyard. How long has it just been sitting there? What kind of elements has it been sitting in? Uh, things like that. I and, mean, that that's well, always would be something. I don't. And want if it's at a junkyard, air- there's a reason for it, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's it, it, yeah, it's a reason a flood for it. Car, you know, you get the you get the airbag, and the the connector is just corroded to all hell. You know, all of a sudden, that thing's never going to be happy. You know, it's going to throw up a ton of uh, resistance in your wiring and and that you know that would ruin everything it, it just wouldn't it wouldn't work if i mean well, you may be able to clean it up but you know it is worked. it it are the are the connectors in the in the airbag plug are they you know as as big as what they were before right. they got crazy corroders and like, lord knows there's some, there's some things to be considered especially you know you get an airbag it, was that was that a flood car <laughs> you know yeah yeah and yeah, nissan that nissan has to, again if you're getting someone to pull parts for you if it's an important part like that i would I would want to know, hey, can you can you send me the VIN for the vehicle yeah. um, that you're pulling this off of so I can just do a quick Carfax? If you do a Carfax and it's a Texas flood car, do you really trust any electrical component out of that? And guess what? <laughs> Once that's sent to you, that's kind of, hey, you bought it out of a junkyard car. I mean, yeah, most but, junkyards don't warranty their stuff. Nor do parts pullers. Um, but do you um, – do you – you know, Nissan has already a problem. Well, most manufacturers right now have a problem with the Takata uh, airbags as is. So, so let's not yeah. add another <laughs> another factor to that. So now where I would be comfortable with it is like radios, um, not speakers, obviously, because I think speakers just get dry rotted as is in a car. They, they kind of tear apart. Cup holders, like Danny was saying, Maybe seats, depending. That's one of those things, unless you're actually pulling that part yourself, I, I would be iffy because things always look different in picture versus versus in, in, in person. Um, 
I like I said before. I, I mean, I don't know anybody's going to use use brake pads. Um, any of the braking system, I would probably be a little iffy on. Even the calibers on a used car, Dan. Would would you be comfortable there? Yeah, it kind of depends. I don't know. I I don't think I've had a. I don't think I'd have a big problem with calibers, but I don't know. Well, okay, I, would, I, and it, calibers it, it are kind of like to me, they're like putting retreads on your car. I'm like, uh, you're kind of taking. Yeah, it it, it kind of depends on what you, what vehicle. Um, I don't see a huge problem with any calipers on most Nissans. I don't know what you run into, but I, I haven't run into any caliper issues. Right. <laughs> on, right. on any of the Nissan vehicles I've had, it may and be I think, for you. I but. think two calipers. That's something. I think you also got to look when you're looking at possibly using a junkyard OEM or something. Maybe even compare it to what an aftermarket actually is. Calipers. If I was looking at that, I almost would just say i'll just go aftermarket caliber that is, yeah that, that's a big thing too is is a, sometimes you can find uh what, what we'd call oem equivalent um to a used junkyard part on amazon and it'll be at your door in a day yeah you know buy with one click <laughs> you know and you have a brand new or even sometimes reman parts um for what you could spend at a at a pick apart so some yeah, it, it's always it's always a give and take, you know. What's your budget? What's your what's your expectations? How long are you gonna have the car? And if it's something, if it's hard to find part, you know, then yeah, absolutely, pick a part's the way to go. Especially you know, or if it's like a tenth of the cost, and it's not, you know, maybe safety related or or it's something that you know you want to be able to rely on big time, and you have no idea what state, uh, you know. I actually have a, a steering rack that I use steering rack that I have, but I bought it because I wanted a backup steering rack for the racetrack. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a, it's a pick apart part, but you know, I, I, <clears throat> it's not leaking and it's a steering rack. They're, they're really, they're not too, you know, if a steering rack's not leaking a bunch of fluid in it, it's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty right. basic part. I've had, I've had a steering, I have a steering rack right over my, on my table here. And uh, they're they're pretty basic. Other than, you know, if the seals are if the seals are blown, then it's going to leak. If they're not, then it it holds. You know, if the if right. the seal if there's fluid in it at the time when it got pulled out, then it's it's probably going to be pretty good. And I got it was full of fluid. So well, and you um, know, some of this too. I guess it depends on you know, since we're worldwide, I don't even know how some countries approach junkyards versus like the American way of doing it. Some like you know, down in Australia, I know they're big just on you can't modify vehicles very much. So I, how do they handle handle? Uh, Dan's over there giving it to us there. I, uh, but I don't even know, I would say in Australia, how they handle that. And maybe some of our listeners down there can, uh, can, uh, answer that, but let's get to some of those. Yeah, let's get questions. some listener questions, Dave. What's uh, I well, know there was a bunch. Well, and let's, let's get some, some feedback on this particular topic. Sorry. I'm just taking me just a second here. I had it. We had, do we have a video comment? Well, we've, we we we've got some comment. of those, but I wanted to finish up just with some, uh, since we asked some questions of our uh, yeah yeah i think we i think we answered one or two i, I brought one up but um oh. ooh, little, little burp you know what i'm drinking tonight what are you drinking tonight man i'm drinking a figaro mountain brewing company hoppy poppy indian pale ale nice and it is absolutely delicious i don't know if you guys ever you guys get any fig mountain never heard of it that's a it's a that's a pretty local stuff we got we got like a million home brews around here but uh, this this brew is delicious. If it ever makes it out to you, mm. Mm, that's mm. right. Well, mm. Aaron, Aaron Samuelson, our buddy mm. over there uh, with his podcast, he he commented and said buying used is generally cheaper and will let you stretch your budget, advancing your project along a little sooner, which Danny I think can appreciate. Yeah, but absolutely. he's definitely saying buy wise. I mean, I think we commented on that a little bit. I think that's I think that's one of the most important parts of of what we've been trying to nail home is. If you're gonna buy used parts, make sure that they're coming from somewhere that that you trust. You yeah. know, if you trust who you're buying from, then then golden. You know, but if if it's somebody that you know is just grabbing something and, and sending it to you, and and once you get it and it's not awesome and you're screwed, you know, if, if you trust the person, sweet. Well, having you know, and there's always always with the the kind of 
the guy, the middle guys that are selling used parts, there's always that risk of did the junkyard just ship out? Did they sort of lie to the middle guy maybe and just ship out whatever they shipped out? And then, then you're stuck with a gas tank that's probably for the wrong vehicle or, you know, just something that, that's not going to work. And then you got to battle a middle guy who probably didn't have a hand in it and ultimately is not maybe as responsible for it, but he's stuck with the problem and their true, the victim can't really get his money back because the guy actually handled the part. They don't care. Let's see. Um, uh, Mr. Rob Toback, who we all know and love, he was like, if it's if it's uh, where is it? rebuildable and something that my life is not dependent on, used is fine. He goes, I'm normally after new parts because the stuff I break can't be found in good condition elsewhere. So I think as, as us being kind of Xterra, Nissan, Frontier, older truck guys, I think the, we're going to start seeing more and more used parts because they don't build that truck anymore. And it's just, it's a fact of, you know, Nissan in the next year or so is going to quit making the Gen 2 Frontier, which is a bummer because the Xterra had a lot of compatible parts on it. So those, the fresh parts aren't going to always be there as much. So, I mean, that's some of it. Let's see. Hey guys, uh, real quick. I just wanted to give a, a really big update while, while you're looking, Dave. No, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Did detract from your, uh, from your research, but I, I, I just had this just in. Uh, it's big news. Uh, Melissa Ray Scott just liked our podcast. What? Yeah, you, you're kidding story. me. And Sherry Ray and Bonnie Johnson just like our podcast page. Man, you're that uh, that's the power wow. of the holding effect right there. Wow, that's a hold effect. I think that is a hold effect. I think someone's <laughs> looking for the hold effect tonight. <laughs> someone's looking to get some hold effect when they're playing their cards. That's what that is. Well, let's see. Our buddy Cody Jameson, who we just had on the show last time, he's like, half of my Navarro was built from used parts uh, until I had the cash to replace it with new gear, which is a big thing. If if you're going to – if used is where it's at, but you have the plan to buy new down the road, I can see that. When it, yeah, when it comes down to, to hey, I'm on a budget, and I'm just going to buy stuff that I can slap this thing together and get it on the road and then fix it as it comes, more power to you. You know, if, if you could just, if you can, and, and the way to go really is if you have a pick apart close to you that you can go grab used parts off of something and you're on a gnarly budget. Let's say you bought a wrecked Xterra and you're on a, you know, you got 500 bucks and you got to replace some stuff and get it on the road. You can cruise down to the parts. You know, and you you spend five hundred bucks and get that thing running and rolling, whatever, dude. That's freaking awesome. Good good on you. You know, right? Um, yeah, dude. It's, you know, what, you know I, everything's I, I relative. I guarantee you, the thing with Cody too, though, after interviewing and talking to him and knowing the trails he's ran and like he talked about, like you just can't get a tow truck out there. Yeah. I guarantee you, he bought those used parts or picked them, whatever he did, then upgraded them to a new part, but kept those used and old parts for his spare parts collection. I yes. guarantee you that's exactly yes. what he did, that's, which is that's really what smart. I did. Yeah. I, I've got, I've got, I've got my, like I replaced the hubs on the race truck with your hubs with brand new, you know, brand new Nissan hubs, but I have those old hubs and they're sitting in the, they're going to be in my, they're going to be in my spares catalog, you know, when you're in <laughs> a mean, whole, you're That's in a whole different is. land of you need spare parts like crazy. I, now. I need spare parts like yeah, like like I need air to breathe <laughs> when it comes to this truck. I will be replacing these parts, um, but at the same time, like yeah, I mean, if you're gonna be beating the shit out of your truck, then yeah, you you should have a lot of spare parts. But um, even then, yeah, there's nothing wrong with some spare parts if they're still pretty much good. I mean, I have a actually one of my spare parts was a a busted steering rack. And uh, I ended up just taking it apart because I wanted to see what, what I was going to I was gonna say. I think I remember you talking about it. you were just disassembling it to see if you yeah, could do I, it. I was I was looking to see if it was like a rebuildable thing. And then once I got it apart, I was like, you need some serious <laughs> reman remanufacturing tooling to get this thing to rebuild. So I was like, whatever. I, I, was, I had I had two two steering racks. One was puking puke, puking out the sides of it. That's the one I replaced out of my uh, out of my red truck, and uh, yeah, I wanted to see what was inside, so I pulled it apart. It's basically the story of my life. Well, that's and that's that's a good thing, man. Um, I can take things apart. <laughs> I just can't put them back together. Hey, yeah, uh, and before we get into some more of these listener questions, did you guys see that PMP Engineering has a new yeah. uh, front t- front bumper out? 
killer new front bumper. Killer new front bumper. I can't. I you know what? I can't comment. It, it's a it's a great looking front bumper. That's all I can say on yeah. account of the fact that I'm my race truck is not sponsored by Hefty Fabworks. Well, and, and uh, <laughs> I was about to say, Jamie. <laughs> but but uh, I'm sure you guys have some nice things to say about them. Yeah, I uh, I this I'm this is the most impressive thing I've seen these guys do, man. I mean, they you know they put their heart into everything they do, but this one like they really seem to take their time with this bumper design and a a lot of good thought into it, man. I wanted to give those guys a shout out because I really liked it. Go to their Facebook page and check it out, man. There, I think uh, um, it's all, be... all I got. All I got to say is one of these days those guys are gonna hire a photographer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes all i gotta say is it's a pretty cool bumper but it's still not a hefty fab amen that's right and speaking it of it, I, I will say it is the one of the better better steel bumpers i've seen but it ain't aluminum and it ain't tubular totally <laughs> well it was kind of tubular what they had a tubular option oh do they i didn't well, see that and one last Just thing before we we give we get into these viewer questions because I know I know somebody's excited they want to win a hat or a shirt or something. So, yeah. but tonight, well, it'll this will be Monday. But as you were listening, think about the fact that Truck Night in America is uh, premiering tonight. Oh, Ryan Miller and oh, Will Will. I'm um, spacing. I'm spacing. Help me out. Help me out. Will. Um. Will Will uh, Will Yeah Will. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're so sorry, Will. We love you so much, yeah. dude. But, but if you uh, see Will and, a, Will and Ryan, if Will you and see Ryan a, are on Truck Night in America coming out tonight, right? Yeah, Will drives a well. Will's premieres I think towards the end of the month in February, and uh, Ryan's is the first of March. But if you see a, a Nissan Frontier with a, a Army camo all over it, that's Will's. And if you see a Nissan Xterra that just looks like it's falling apart. That's our buddy Ryan's, <laughs> but I was happy. I, we the couldn't talk about axe, it. Dude. The battle yeah. dude. Ryan Miller's battle. The, the one of the one of I, I'd say Ryan Miller is one of the biggest OG Xterra owners, and his Xterra has probably been to a just as many and or more Xterra events and or complete bashings out of any Xterra out there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like he he has beat the living piss out of that thing and took her rode her hard, took her home wet, and then re you know right slapped a couple a couple of pieces on it and drove it across the country again, dude. Well, it was a shame because Ryan stayed at he was coming down from Chicago, going down to Georgia where they filmed that show, and uh, he was stayed at, he spent the night at my house, man, and and we're kind of geeking out, and he was all excited oh, that right. he was he was going to get to go do that. But we could say a word. You can't say a word about it. They sign You sign agreements saying that you're yeah, not allowed to. Yeah, not exposures initially, right? Until, and, until, they, until they give you the green light. Right, and even at Wint, like, he poor, that poor truck is just beat to shit, man. And he brought it to Wint, and I think he only got to wheel part of a day, and then one of his wheels fell off as he was trying to wheel. <laughs> um, but Well, that, that, thing, that, thing was, <laughs> that thing was beat to shit at the win before yes and he put it in the garage and eventually he's like you know what i'm gonna rebuild he started rebuilding it he put a lot of he did a lot of stuff he got it all freshened up um and it was starting to look nice and then all of a sudden i think he put in for truck down in america mm-hmm. got it and then it was a mad scramble to put a put a little bit of a roll cage in it yeah uh, and get it kind of like up to par as far as their standards were concerned well, so it was super sad that like he had just kind of refurbished it, and then he would have just went out and beat the living dick out of it. Yeah, and he uh, what sucks was we were all kind of pestering him at a went like, "Hey man, how did you do? How did you do?" And he's just like, "I can't say a word, man." And and uh, you just see this poor truck, and you're like, "Well, this had to get past the first round anyways. <laughs> Nobody just just I tears hope. up." <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So I wanted to give a little shout out to Mr. Ryan there, Ryan Miller. It's Miller time. Uh, come March, I think seventh is when his premieres. And a uh, big shout out to Will. I haven't heard how Will did either, but hopefully uh, they, these guys represent Nissan proud, man, because there's been no representation on that show before. So we do appreciate that, and uh, hopefully Nissan appreciates that. Let's see, Danny. Do you got any kind of feedback there that you want to get to before I find the video one? Uh, <clears throat> I got I got a little plug. I got a little shameless plug for another podcast. Is that allowed on our yeah, podcast? Definitely. No. I'm, no. I'm gonna. <laughs> <it's not. laughs> Hi, this was the Nissan Nation podcast. It's over. Uh, 
Yeah, the Dirty Dooner. It's, it, I mean, it, this is kind of it's kind of a West Coast deal, but Dirty Dooner podcast. I'm going to hop on his podcast and uh, and say what's up over there. What kind of podcast uh, is he's this? He's out of Arizona. Uh, he he talks to a lot of race truck race car owners. Um, a lot of guys that go. Out, Glamis is a huge, huge um, area of dunes down here in Southern California. Um, that that it's like a it's a thing. Um, and then there's Pismo Beach, which is north of me, about two hours. Right. Well, let's get. I'm, so I am going to. We've got a, quite a few listeners tonight, but we're going to do two winners tonight. So let's get to. Let's get oh, to I the like it. I like first it. one, and they're going to get to choose a hat or a shirt. Let's see if it wants to play. Drum roll. Can we get a drum roll. What's going on, NMP? With you guys wanting to get into more lower cars and sports cars content. Does this mean we're going to get more 350Zs, 370s, Sentras, Altimas, Maximas, G35s, 37s, possibly even like a lowered kicks? I Let me know. I'm kind of interested. That was our buddy that, Cody. That was Cody, old Cody. So I think we touched on that a little bit, Holden, but do you want to take it a, to kind of give him the answer to that? Well, um, we're not going to see any G35s or G37s because we're the Nissan Nation podcast. So, first off, Cody. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> Kix is the one that interests me. I, I don't see anyone producing a kit for that, but I've been wrong in the past. I do think Ultima is going to be something where you're eventually going to see people start having some fun with those, especially with the turbo model. I could totally see that um, getting some love as far as uh that that type of community disease obviously always going to have a following with lowered um i mean that's just kind of a given whenever we see the newsy if it's ever going to happen you'll, you'll you might see that depending on how they price it and what kind of price point they come out at i could totally see that coming back and being a big thing with nissan so yeah i i could see it kicks questionable um i'm definitely I've looked in a couple times here and there, just waiting for some of them to start popping up. Some of these Ultimas where people are, are doing them up and having fun with them. Well, let's see. And we got one more. We've got Mr. Uh, Party Time, Brandon McCullough. Let's see what he's got to say. Maybe. What's up, Dave and Nissan Nation? I noticed on the last show you guys were talking about how it seemed like everyone went VK56 crazy doing swaps and a lot were done. Um, how long do you think it'll be before we start seeing the diesel motor out of Titans um, getting swapped into Xterras and Frontiers? All right, man. Danny, I'm going to let you jump in on that one. Uh, diesels, huh? Uh, hey, you know girls, there's the... girls like the D, Danny. I know. I think they love the D. If there's one thing that I've learned in my 37, almost 38 years, is that that vitamin D is the most important vitamin that women need, uh, on the antithesis, uh, on the, on the juxtaposition of that vitamin B is the only thing that we need. So, um, with that, I would say that, the uh, the Cummins for B Cummins is doing a huge thing with pushing out their crate engines. They're trying to do a little bit of that kind of, like, you know, the LS style that, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a ton of stuff with Jeeps and land, um, land rovers, yeah, like discoveries. They, they did. They done a ton of discoveries where they kind of sell kits. And there's a lot of dudes putting those um, those Cummins in there. Um, I'd like to see more of it, but it the cost effectiveness of dropping a VK motor in the frontier um, is it's so cost effective when it comes to slapping a powerful, awesome fairly economic motor like you can get way better gas mileage out of the vk from from my understanding everybody told me that you know they're getting you know four four three or four mpgs better out of the vk 56 in their frontiers than than they get out of the vq 40s um so you know what there might be some there might be some diesel guys putting them in um eventually but uh I think it's the, that's a tough one, man, because you're dealing like the new diesel. If that's the one he's referring to, there's a lot of electronics to deal with on that one. Yeah, I I don't I don't see Nissan coming out with a diesel in the. I mean, maybe, but I just don't. I don't see it. I think I think they'll come out with a V6. Um, well, I think he was direct, referring direct to guys. Inject, and guys, he's just, talking about swapping it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I, he was talking about doing like swaps. 
I and and like I said, the the it's so easy to swap in the big V eight and have like just gobs of power. Yeah. That I don't think that trying to figure out a diesel swap is nearly as appealing. Well, imagine, you know what I'm imagine the way people snap CVs now. <laughs> imagine all that torque. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. We've got Mr. Well, Mark. And, and you got the weight of it, too. I mean, yeah. you yeah, have to it, sass it. It probably weighs a little bit more than a, than a VK, I imagine. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty small... If somebody was going to swap one in, it would it would be that uh, what is, I can't remember. Eight, I'm trying to for the life of me. I can't remember what that um, that Cummins motor is. It's 2.8 liter yeah. or not a 2.8 maybe. Yeah, it's a 2.8 crate. The four four six BT four BT. I don't remember. No, nice. it's, it's, holding, holding. I don't remember anything really for more than like a minute. <laughs> Squirrel, uh, holding. You pretty much know on that too. You think? Yeah, I mean. If we're talking about the one straight out of the Titan, I I don't see <laughs> no. There's there's just no That's a big that's a big but that's ass what he, motor, that's what he, dude. that's 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 what he asked was the one out of the Titan. So yeah. I I know Cummins has yeah. crate motors. I could totally see that. But as far as pulling that one out of the XD, I just do not see how I mean, A it's not going to I don't think it bolts well, up the same at all. Yeah, the biggest thing is it's um, different it's different frame and different frame. I mean so you could it, anything's possible these days. I mean, you know? that's a different transmission completely than the regular V8. So, yeah. Well, let's see. Mr. Mar- I'd say no. Marcus Yonkers asked, um, "Which of the three MP M- I can't even say NMP host has the baddest Nissan?" All right. So, so we'll each take a turn. So you can't vote for yourself. So hold and start us well, out. Hold on, Dave. Wait, I think that we makes all can. No sense. I think we can all Wait agree a at the Is same it, time. Who has can... the baddest or who has the most badass? Because uh, I technically have the most badass Nissan trucks. Really? Well, yes. I don't think oh, a dealership. Oh, a number. <laughs> a number. I yeah. If if we're going with numbers, it's holded. If we're going with um. <clears throat> Longevity, it's Dave. If we're ha- if we're going for the single most badass truck, it's not yeah. running right now, Dan. It, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't even do anything. It's a push cart right now, man. But it, it's it's still up in the air. The most, <laughs> that one's the still most, up in the air. But I think we know who's you can win. have the most badass potential. I have the most badass potential truck. Well, I think right I now. think out of all three of us, we each have a unique vehicle to our surroundings. All I know is I can show I can show up I can show up to an off road party, and be ready to party with my vehicles. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But I mean, I my my red truck will wheel your 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 Xterra. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. But be by driver skill. Because <laughs> you're always too drunk and hungover. Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Oh man. The grunt calling the, put- the the kettle black right there. I love how dude. Dave's not even trying to defend himself and get in on the conversation at all. He's I just don't. totally rolled over and possum. <laughs> <laughs> we both, we both, me and you both have trucks with cages at this point. So Dave, Dave's rolling in second place. Well, mine will be cage uh, coming up. So, but, but, well, and, and I'm not years. done. I'm not done. Holden, Holden did go out and, and, Bought not built when it comes to his <laughs> cage truck, so no shame in that either. I can't. I, I, I can't even. All. I can't so fight on that. I saved by switching to bought not built. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. not that I not that I technically built the cage in my truck, but the rest of it will be built by me. Well, I can't even fight on that one because I got a I got a trip to Arizona <laughs> to go with him, so I can't. I was about to say, I you know how much I had to pay? I had to ride in a car with Dave for four days. <laughs> that, 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 that's a bill. Do you know how many Driven Twix? <laughs> you know how many Twix and Monster Whites that I've I've oh, seen him eat? So I've paid for it. I know I know the pain, dude. I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> Man, you've all done your time with me, um, including our <laughs> listeners. Um, <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to our buddies over at Rogue Overland who uh, just wrapped up their uh, winter trip. Dan, oh, I know I know yeah, you were yeah. supposed to be there, but your truck came first. I'll tell you what, dude. I like. I, I'm I'm really sad that I didn't get to go on that trip. There's so many so many of my cool homies that uh, that were on that trip, and and looking back, I like I wanted to go on that trip. Luckily, I'm going to be able to go out 
a um, little announcement. I'll, I'll be out at King of the Hammers um, in a couple of weeks. So I'm pretty pumped that I'm going to be able to go out and hang out with uh, Stephen Lutz from Rugged Rocks and uh, and some of the guys that some, there, there's some there's some big names uh, in the Nissan community that come out to that King of the Hammer. So hopefully I'll be able to hook up with all those guys and hang out with them. But, um, but yeah, Rogue cool. Overland, they should be popping out another video pretty soon. They just right. dropped the last one. I think there's some they did. There's so some they one. they have a, a great YouTube channel. To, uh, follow. A, a YouTube channel? I like that. That's uh, the most premium of YouTubes <laughs> is YouTube. That's the one where you watch YouTube while you're in the tub. That's right, uh, man. That's what I do. I don't know. And speaking of hooking, <laughs> speaking of hooking up, man, I got to see our buddy Gone actually got to speak for himself the other day. Um, he really released a little thing saying, "Hey, Nissan's framing me." Blah blah blah. Uh, please let me go. And and the judicial system over there is like, "No, sorry, buddy. We don't. We don't." That ought to work. Yeah. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. Oh, shit on the Japanese company. Oh, no. Sorry. We're really not going to let you go now. Um, so anything, any last words, guys, before we uh, we do our thing? No. Nope. No last words for me. Dan's still in cloud nine over there sitting in his caged yeah, up I'm, vehicle. I'm having a hard time focusing to tell you the truth. <laughs> I, I keep noticing things on my race track. I'm like, oh, I should do this. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, we're, we're podcasting. <laughs> Holden, I know, I know. As we wrap up, man, you guys got that new K two package, uh, Titans over there, man. That thing, you've done some walk arounds with it. We posted a video of it, st- cold starting. Ah, dude, I'm all over the map with your vehicles, man. Every time I'm like, ah, I think I'm gonna just wait for this one, and and you post something cool, and I'm like, Jesus, now I got to rethink of my next purchase. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a fun fun few weeks um whether it's the rocky ridge stuff the rocky ridge armada those have both been really fun uh just been doing stuff on the side building trucks and obviously we got that rock 100 truck that we built that was really cool if you haven't seen that uh check us out on social media check that out i'm gonna post some more pictures of that truck i was kind of waiting to let rock 100 really get their whole shtick as far as getting the release on it let them feel real special about it but yeah, definitely check us out. Uh, having fun, building some unique stuff, building some fun stuff. Definitely, um, I and be doing some more videos, some more walk around stuff with Titans and everything like that. So yeah, what is your you, YouTube channel that you're doing some of that stuff on now? It is Nissan or Regal Nissan Titans. So I'm gonna be doing lots of just little simple truck stuff. So if you're in the market for a Titan, uh, definitely check us out. We drive kind of all over the place i've delivered trucks all over the place driven other places to pick up trucks i've heard Um, i've heard about your deliveries buddy and i've heard about your shipping times man it's pretty amazing um you know guys before we go this is sort of i know i said last month it was our anniversary but the first podcast did not get released till february 1 something like that so this is our four-year anniversary of doing this show and and uh, I want to I want to give a little quick thing of I appreciate Danny being on here for these past four years, man. I know you get busy um, with your race truck and all that. It's really taking your time. And I appreciate uh, Holden coming on here, man. I, I It's brought a new dynamic to what we do. Danny knows the racing. I'm kind of the East Coast rock guy and Holden's the sales guy. So we really we really do appreciate you guys listening to us and uh we're nearing a hundred thousand downloads, which doesn't sound like a ton, but I'll take it for four years. Uh, and Danny, you know, we, that first show, we had a Super Bowl prediction. We, uh, the Patriots were playing. Who were they playing? Um, dang it. We did. We By did. The way, go Rams. <laughs> we did, but we've got, we've got a Super Bowl coming up and that, that podcast Remember, I nailed the score. Oh, I, did you? I did. I nailed it to a T. Um, so are four, you about to announce a giveaway? No, yeah, four years later for me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't did you bet win that, your own contest. <laughs> I, did, I did. No, but before we get out of here, guys, uh, big game predictions. What Danny? Uh, we're Bengals fans, so we we don't know what Super Bowls are. Well, I I have recently become a Rams fan. Uh, my buddy that uh, that Traitor. runs a tire store, he got in good with the Rams, mm-hmm. and so I've actually met. Um, I think maybe about ten. Uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe like six or seven Rams. I, I jump started uh, one of the coaches Ferraris. Um, so I, I'm because uh, about about five miles away from where I live is their um, training center mm-hmm. at um, at one of the local colleges where they do they they have their training center over there uh, next to the college. So uh, so I'm 
kind of a backdoor Rams fan on accident. Uh, right. I mean, yeah, they're LA Rams, cool, whatever. But I, I was never really like, oh, all of a sudden I'm a Rams fan now because they're LA. But I met some dudes and they were super cool, and I'm 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 kind of friends with a couple of the guys now. So, you know, they they threw me some hats and they're like, hey, thanks for jumping my Ferrari. I'm like, well, no, I gotta be a Rams <laughs> fan. So they're like my they're like my backup team now, and they just happen to be a badass team. Uh, the story is pretty cool. So I'm I'm guessing. Um, Rams are going to win, uh, let's see, 20, 21 to 17. I think it's going to be a very close game. I think, uh, I think old Brady's going to shit the bed in the end. Damn. He's going to try for one of his Brady comebacks and he's not going to be able to do it. We tried to pass to himself last year and that didn't work. Out, so. <laughs> uh, hold, hold, hold last year too, didn't he? Yeah. And, and speaking of the Super Bowl, it's over there near Holden, man. So you've got all that. Z- yeah. Going Holden, on. What's up, dude? You, is there yeah. some good tailgating going out in there? Or do you, do you have a dog in the fight at all? Or do you care less about this game? Uh, I don't necessarily care about the game. I'd like to see, I'm kind of in a, good spot because when I, I don't have a team in the fight, I just kind of look for who has the most uh, university of Georgia players and <laughs> both teams have a lot of university of Georgia players. Both their starting running backs are both from university of Georgia. Um, so I would like the Rams to win because I've always been a big Todd Gurley fan, yeah. but I honestly think it's going to be a 37, 23 Patriots. I don't think you're even going to have to have a Tom Brady fourth wow. quarter come back. Wow. I, uh, I think you're going to choke on a chicken bone later. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm i going to be honest. I This this whole playoff time, was a, it was a tough one to uh, to predict. All four teams there at the end uh, two Sundays ago was was just freaking – any of them could have won. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm tired of seeing the Patriots, but, damn, they're good. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to – it's hard to kind of crap on the team that's – that yeah. not what nine Super Bowls or something like that. Yeah, that that and the Rams kind of got a buy with that one. That yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bear. sure so I just uh, looked the other way. I'll, us Rams fans are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't remember that play. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? But the Saints they got the, the hell Saints, of a call. There's billboards in downtown Atlanta. Oh, I believe it. That yeah. the Saints have bought. Nice. I mean, Same, pretty much to like be we fair, were they, they, they had some, there was some serious missed calls earlier on the Saints, but that was. <laughs> That was like we were just laughing ourselves to the bank, <laughs> you know. Like, well, I guess that I one wouldn't that, call. that one wouldn't have been as bad if the cameraman wasn't right in the face of that oh, it penalty. Was and, like, and then like, you see, like, the proof was like ridiculous. And then there's a referee the right Bowl, behind him, so I ain't but gonna complain at, about it. At the end of the day, well, the one thing no one talks about is the Saints had the ball in field goal position, and they decided to throw it three straight times yep. instead of running it running the clock down, and I yeah. would much rather have Jared Goff with no timeouts in like 32 seconds left Yeah, yeah. than hey, for sure. throwing the ball around. So, so, I mean, yes, totally not saying it wasn't pass interference, <laughs> but it's also completely <laughs> stupid play calling on the same I don't even remember part. that play. I don't, remember, I don't know what play you're talking about. <laughs> well, so, I, Dave, uh, I what's, think, your, what's your prediction? I think this one's going to be a blowout, guys. I, I really do, and I, I hate to go against your Rams, Danny, but I, I think I – I think that it's going to be 41-18. Oh, let's see, 41-19. All right, Patriots. so whoever's closest. All right, well, whoever's the furthest away. You're, you're saying 31-19? No, 41-19. 40, all right, so whoever's 41. the furthest away has to take a picture doing the Danny in a Speedo on the top of their vehicle. I don't own a Speedo, Danny. <laughs> I don't well, know what you your can, wardrobe's you like, but you can find something that looks like a speedo. <laughs> Do you own a speedo, Danny? Is that no, why? I, I, I can find one from the Goodwill for very cheap. Are you guys in? Speaking, speaking of money, used parts, put your freaking money where your mouth is, dude. Put I think your I'm going to go. Your mouth is. I think I'm going to go new OEM on the speedo. <laughs> Listen, I'm confident. Dave, you can get you can no. Dave, you can get Duncan to pick you up one. <laughs> no, dude, you just buy ladies, you can buy ladies la- ladies drawers, dude. There's nothing wrong with their parts, dude. Oh my god. Just touch. You just pull a bleach off. <laughs> oh man. Hey, so, are you guys in? Are you guys in? I don't lost if I bet. if I Hashtag own one. Lost the bet. If I owned one, it would be different, man. I uh, you gotta buy one. You, listen, Target, you could buy a speedo for ten bucks. I'm sure. Oh, here we Come go. On. No, okay, Amazon. The lose. Amazon. There you go. No, but have you seen those ones that it's just like hold your boys and it's got one thing around the hip, one hip? 
No, no, no. That's, yeah, that's Dan. I can't, we're going... I can't do that. That's too much, dude. That's yeah. too much, Dave. Because you're not gonna wear it. We need something that's attainable. How about the How about this? Like the like the like the European shorts. All right. You know, the European beach shorts. Doing the Danny on top of your vehicle for the person that gets the that's the furthest away. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm in. Are you in? I'm in. There it is. Locked in. It's locked in. You heard it here. <laughs> National Nissan Nation podcast. The furthest away. Whoever is the furthest from the from the the actual score is doing the Danny on the top of their truck in a pair of European uh, underoo and, and slim trunks. And we're gonna and we're gonna and nothing lose else. Our- we're gonna lose half our followers on Instagram <laughs> after that. <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna up the ante. The first person that listens to this show at, that's got to this point and already knows the score because this doesn't come out till Monday. Whoever can uh can uh hashtag what's our hash we need a hashtag for this. Uh damn I don't know where you're calling, so you gotta come up with this on your own. I know, but what but whoever can <laughs> yeah. uh whoever okay, whoever tags Danny Holden and me on Instagram the first i mean you got to be like you got to dm us as soon as you listen to this part of the show i'm going to send you a hat as well so how about you do this which you had to write down our what our predictions were and you gotta do hashtag and whoever lost so hashtag danny lost okay hashtag dave lost hashtag holden lost i like that i like that Whoever, whoever decides the loser first and it's correct they get a free hat, and they get to laugh at us or one of us, right? In the in the tiny European shorts on top of our truck. So so, but direct message us too because I need to know. That's the only way I'll I'll know who was first. So either Instagram or Facebook, just DM us, and uh, we got a hat Damn. coming your way. So uh, and uh, speaking of coming your way, Danny, me and you might be coming together a little sooner. Than we expected this year. Uh, maybe yeah, we, that's that's some big news coming up. We've we'll, got, we'll do some announcements shortly. We've got some things to look forward to, guys. The finalization um, when we get the when we get the green light. Right now we're on the yellow. Yep. Or well, yeah, we're on yellow. We're at the drag strip. We're on the yellow. We're waiting for that green, and about to about to put the metal down, dude. Right. So think rape cabin part two, guys. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, yeah, so, so from every- somebody's hole. So everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting fruity around here. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So from everybody here at the Nissan Nation podcast, to my buddy JR over there that did our music, to uh, my beautiful wife who did the intros, to... Uh, to Captain Rapey over there, Daniel Groters and his new race truck. Uh, to my buddy Holden over there, holding the ATL down while the Super Bowl is coming on strong. I want to say these lug nuts. Yeah, you're holding some lug nuts. You <laughs> tighten down, buddy. Tighten it down. Um, so from everybody here at the Nissan Nation, my name is David Boyd. And what are we, Danny? Oh. Peace, everybody. Love y'all. <laughs>